Yellowstone gets a lot of snow in the winter. Averaging three feet in January and closing most of the roads in the park. Snowmobiles and snow coaches are the only vehicles allowed. But we also travel by horse drawn sleigh, snowshoe, and dog sled. Welcome to Yellowstone in winter. There are several hundred elk in this snow-covered meadow, but we will spook them if we try to get closer. However, they are comfortable with horses, so an old-fashioned horse-drawn sleigh is the best way to get good footage. The Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem hosts the largest herd of elk in the world, about 200,000 animals. The cows and calves often travel in large groups during the summer months, while the males tend to travel by themselves or in very small groups, feeding on grasses and tree twigs. In winter, however, when food is scarce, several hundred migrate here to the National Elk Refuge in Jackson, Wyoming. Only the males have antlers, which start growing in the spring and are shed in a few weeks from now, when they will be gathered and sold for artistic purposes. The largest antlers may be four feet long and weigh 40 pounds. They are made of bone and can grow at a rate of one inch per day. Elk live 10 to 13 years in the wild. It's way past the rutting season, so these males are simply getting in a practice session before they shed their antlers. Rival bulls challenge opponents by bellowing and by paralleling each other, allowing potential combatants to assess the other's fighting prowess. If neither bull backs down, they engage in antler wrestling. Weighing in at up to 700 pounds, wrestling matches between these huge deer can often result in serious injury. Oh my, a coyote is strolling among the elk, checking out his prospects. Although packs of coyote can take down a young calf or weak adult, this lone coyote poses no threat, and the elk appear calm. Coyotes are opportunistic hunters, surviving primarily on small mammals, such as voles, prairie dogs, rabbits, ground squirrels, and mice. They will also feed on carrion, although they prefer fresh meat. Fruits and vegetables are a significant part of the coyote's diet in the autumn and winter months. In fact, part of the coyote's success as a species is its dietary adaptability. These coyotes have come upon an early morning wolf kill, somewhat close to the road. To no one's surprise, wolves do not feel safe near humans. They left the elk carcass for the coyotes and birds rather than hang around as cars began to congregate. Ravens and magpies wait their turn and will pick the carcass clean before the day is over.
The red fox is the largest of its species and the most geographically distributed member of the family of carnivores. Found across the entire northern hemisphere from the Arctic Circle to North Africa, Central America, and the steppes of Asia. The animal's cunning was noted in Native American mythology and by the authors of the Bible, who applied the word fox to false prophets and hypocrites. And in European folklore, the figure of Reynard the fox symbolizes trickery and deceit. Red foxes are omnivores with a highly varied diet, but feed primarily on small rodents. In some regions, fruit can amount to 100% of their diet in autumn. We're heading out today by snow coach, the only way to travel in the park. These refurbished vehicles have been around since the 50s. It's clear who has the right of way on the Yellowstone roads. Several thousand wild bison now live in Yellowstone National Park. But the story of this majestic animal covers more than 100 years of struggle and conflict. In the early 1800s, an estimated 65 million bison roamed throughout North America. However, indiscriminate slaughter had a devastating effect on the population, and by 1890, fewer than 1,000 remained. Even with the establishment of Yellowstone National Park, protection and sanctuary for the bison did not occur until the U.S. Army arrived in 1886 to protect the park's resources. 100 years later, there were only 3,500 bison in the park. Bison are nomadic grazers, wandering high on Yellowstone's grassy plateaus in summer. Despite their slow gait, bison are surprisingly fast for animals that weigh more than half a ton. In winter, they use their large heads like a plow to push aside snow and find winter food. It's time to head back, but the snow is deep on the road and we're having a tough time getting up the hill. We're stuck. Heavy wet snow is under the snow coach and we can't get traction. Okay. We're having fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. <laughs> We've been here over four hours and it's dark and cold, but rescue is on the way. A cocktail in front of a roaring fire will be very welcome this evening. So, what about the wolves, you ask? Our guides have set up scopes to look at several wolves spread out on the hill, about one half mile away. There are about 100 wolves in Yellowstone, down from about 130 a few years ago. When wolves leave the park, they are often shot, either to protect livestock or because they are competition for human hunting of elk. The wolves are not visible through the camera's zoom lens and rarely come close enough to photograph. They are probably calling to another wolf, letting him or her know that this is their territory. Wolves are highly territorial and will kill other wolves that trespass. However, both males and females will leave the pack to mate, avoiding inbreeding. We are very lucky. This large female is coming down the hill to join her pack on the other side of the road. 
She is the alpha female of the Lamar Canyon Pack, which totals 10 individuals. Estimates put the wild wolf population at about 7,000 animals in Alaska and 5,000 in the lower 48 states. They can weigh up to 130 pounds and generally live less than 10 years in the wild. Right on time, Old Faithful is the symbol of Yellowstone National Park. Its unparalleled array of geysers, hot springs, mud pots, and steam vents provide evidence of the active volcano below our feet. In Yellowstone, you are standing in one of the world's largest active volcanoes. The park is home to some 10,000 thermal features, over 500 of which are geysers. In fact, Yellowstone contains the majority of the world's geysers. Within Yellowstone's thermal features can be seen the product of millions of years of geology at work. The last major eruption occurred 600,000 years ago. Even now, in some places, nearly molten rock resides as little as two miles below the surface. Heat from the volcanic activity makes its presence known by heating groundwater and creating the thermal features we see today. Filming in cold weather can be very challenging. Condensation from the rising moisture can freeze on the lens. Also, it was necessary to place our cameras in a Ziploc bag before bringing it inside to avoid internal condensation, which could damage the camera. Despite the cold, windy weather, I was able to get a few great shots. Moose spend most of the year feeding on twigs, leaves, willows, birch, tree bark, and especially aquatic plants, deriving much needed salt from the shoots. In winter, they get much less food, existing mainly on tree bark and balsam fir leaves. It is a common sight in the Yellowstone region to find moose in your front yard. These two cows are well aware of the fact that wolves generally avoid contact with humans. Moose lack upper front teeth, but have eight sharp incisors on the lower jaw. They also have a tough tongue, lips, and gums, which aid in the eating of woody vegetation. Moose are the largest of the deer with males weighing in at up to 1,500 pounds. They can smell it. Break a little piece and you can smell it. Okay. It's full of the... Uh, we are with Dan Hartman, a wildlife photographer, naturalist, and guide for many film crews who come to Yellowstone to film its natural wonders. We are taking a walk near his home, just outside the park. Yeah. 
It's good to get out for a walk in this beautiful part of the world, especially in winter, when the forest looks so pristine. Snowshoeing is fun. The dogs used for sledding here in Yellowstone are Alaskan Huskies, which are not a breed of dog, but is a type or category with no restriction as to ancestry. The Husky is defined only by its purpose, which is that of a highly efficient sled dog. The dogs are so strong and possess such an inherent drive to pull that even brakes have difficulty holding them back. Getting dog teams to pull together, however, takes months of training. The most memorable part of the sledding experience is the quiet, as we move through this pristine snow-covered sledding trail. It's time for a break. The unseasonably warm temperature of almost 30 degrees made for heavy snow and tough going in spots. Hot drinks, hot food, and a cozy fire combined to make this a truly delightful experience. Those are pretty dry pants, Rob. I like it. It's time to head back now, and the dogs know it. They love to run and view the deep snow as just another challenge. What fun! Bighorn sheep live in small groups of ewes and lambs, with males usually hanging out by themselves or with another male. Since bighorn sheep cannot easily move through deep snow, they prefer dry, rocky slopes, where they have a better chance of avoiding predation. Each horn can weigh up to 30 pounds, while the rams themselves weigh up to 300 pounds. 200 years ago, bighorn sheep were widespread throughout the western United States, with population estimates of higher than 2 million. By around 1900, hunting, competition from domesticated sheep, and diseases had decreased the population to only several thousand. Today, up to 70,000 sheep comprised of several species survive in the North and Western United States. Pronghorn get their name from the distinctive shape of their horn. They can run at speeds close to 60 miles per hour. Although not as fast as cheetahs, they maintain a fast speed for a longer period of time. They are true marathon runners. Even more amazing than its speed is the pronghorn's migration. Herds of pronghorns migrate 
150 miles each way between Wyoming's Upper Green River Basin and Grand Teton National Park. Mule deer are found throughout the entire western United States, living in hot desert regions as well as in the cold mountains. They are easily recognized by their large, mule-like ears. Yellowstone National Park is a winter wonderland, offering a continuous montage of photo opportunities. The park is home to bison, elk, deer, moose, pronghorn, sheep, coyotes, foxes, wolves, and a huge variety of resident and migrating bird life. We hope you enjoyed this brief visit to the world's first national park.